The first few episodes of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, have been a complete and total catastrophe for Amazon. This is a show that they spent $1 billion on for two seasons. They need it to be an incredible global phenomenon, and right now, it is anything but that. It's a forgettable show. It's a boring show. The audience has rejected it, and more than anything else, it seems like it's a big disappointment in the ratings. Even though Amazon took that first day and claimed a record-setting global day for an Amazon series premiere. The real numbers started to show it's really not all that impressive. It's not even the biggest premiere Amazon's ever had. It was third highest, and at least in the United States, it's more comparable to what She-Hulk is drawing viewers-wise than it would be to something like House of the Dragon. And oh yes, we are once again going to talk about House of the Dragon because the ratings are through the roof for this series. House of the Dragon is averaging 29 million viewers per episode. Audience rises 3% in week five. That 29 million number is just in the United States as well, not globally. And they're also actually viewing this, not sampled rings of power like Amazon tried to get away with, with that funny language. But it's to the point where you have articles on Forbes that are calling out Rings of Power for how horrific it is. The Rings of Power has inexplicably terrible writing. Now, this is Eric Kane, who, funnily enough, I had a, an interaction with Eric Kane probably like two years ago or something, where we were going back and forth on Twitter. I blasted him, he blasted me. It is what it is. However, I've come to kind of respect Eric Kane, not because I always agree with him by any stretch of the imagination, but I truly do believe he's given his honest opinion, even if I think he's wrong at times. I think he is one of those people out there that is putting out there what he actually believes for no other reason than it's what he believes. He is blasting Rings of Power. I've come to a sad realization. The creators of Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, know how to create spectacle, but they don't know how to tell a good story. There it is, scrawled in blood on the wall. The writers and showrunners responsible for this show could have won me over with a good fan fiction. They could have tossed Tolkien's lore into a bonfire, and I'd been perfectly happy if they simply crafted an enjoyable story with characters I care about. Now, I certainly don't feel that way. Way. I think a lot of Tolkien fans and Lord of the Rings fans do not feel that way at all. And they do feel that the fact that they're disrespecting Tolkien, disrespecting the lore, that is a big problem. But Eric Kane, Forbes writer, is coming at it the perspective of, I don't even really care about that shit. I just want a story in this world. And even he is saying it's dog shit. Unfortunately, Rings of Power is written so poorly, it defies even my worst fears. Oh yes, I was awed and impressed by the opening two episodes, but how quickly a badly written TV series can wear out its welcome once the shimmer fades. There's a long article where he goes into detail about some of his problems with Rings of Power. You have other places like Screen Ramp trying to do everything they can to justify why Galadriel is a bitch, why the main character of this series is so unlikable, why Galadriel comes off as unlikable in the Rings of Power. It's not that she, that she comes off that way a little bit here and there. That's her entire character. Her entire character description right now would be unlikable bitch. Unlikable bitch who thinks she's always right about everything. And the sad part is, she is... Right, She is presented to be, she's in the right about these things. It's okay for her in-universe to be acting this way because nobody else wants to listen to her. And so with all of this noise out here about Rings of Power, it, it makes this news so much more interesting because we saw from the beginning, there was way more traction for what House of the Dragon was doing than Rings of Power. Amazon came out there, they lied, they gave us some funny numbers that first day. They have been silent in the weeks since. And it made a lot of people question, if your numbers were really that good, why wouldn't you want to brag about them? Why wouldn't you want to talk about them? If, you're, if the numbers were really that good for Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, why would you have to turn off your rating? system for a week because of so-called trolls. Well, in reality, Rings of Power is doing horrific in the ratings right now. House of the Dragon over double the audience, almost three times the audience for that first episode. And I imagine it's only going to get worse for Rings of Power as we go forward because HBO is actually letting people know what's going on. House of the Dragon averaging 29 million viewers per episode. Audience rises 3% in week five. The fifth episode of Game of Thrones prequels do 3% more viewers than episode four. Variety is learned exclusively. Additionally, season one is now averaging 29 million viewers per episode across 
its first five episodes. That's a massive audience for any premium cable series and very promising it's going the way of its predecessor. Game of Thrones averaged more than 44 million viewers for its eighth and final season. Obviously, that was fucking massive despite that we had episode three and, and the Battle of Winterfell, all this stuff that was received so poorly a lot of people were still tuning in to watch the end of Game of Thrones. Now, this isn't 44 million. I don't think anyone really expected it would be after the damage they did to the Game of Thrones brand and the fact that these are completely new and different characters that people are interacting with. But nearly 30 million people per episode tuning into this just in the United States, that's a massive fucking number. And they're using actual shit. They're using not only numbers from HBO, but also the Nielsen ratings and all other things. Real ratings, as opposed to Amazon, where they have not revealed shit about what's going on because they know just how bad it is. House of the Dragon episode five stats combine Nielsen measurement of Sunday's four cable areas with the number of streaming viewers across HBO Max and other programs. When isolating linear viewership, according to Nielsen, 2.5 million people or 2.576 million tuned into the episode on HBO during that hour, a 4% increase when compared to last week's 2.474. No specific episode five total viewer tally across all platforms has been disclosed, but Variety's confirmed viewership was up 3% compared to last week's episode. This is a massive hit and it goes right along with everything we saw with the piracy numbers as well. We talked about this the other day. Piracy numbers shed light on House of the Dragon and Rings of Power's fantasy face-off. For that first episode, the first episode of House of the Dragon compared to Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, 45% more piracy than for Rings of Power. Episode two is the real kicker though. Episode two, 127 more people illegally downloaded House of the Dragon than Rings of Power. There is no demand for this garbage. When you wake up in the morning, uh, on a Monday morning, and you see all the social media just ablaze with House of the Dragon, there are memes out there, there are people talking about it, there are these crazy references to the episode that aired last night. You don't get that for Rings of Power. The only people really that are talking about Rings of Power, you'll see a couple stan accounts that'll blow up, but for the most part, it's just people like, wow, that kind of sucks, that's shitty, wow, that's not very good, is it? You compare that to what you see, kind of, I would call it the water cooler talk, we're obviously not at a water cooler, but just people discussing it and people talking about it, there is so much more demand for House of the Dragon. I thought both these series were gonna be crap. I thought House of the Dragon was gonna be garbage and I was gonna sit here and bitch about it and bitch about what a terrible fucking job they did with this. Well, I was pleasantly surprised that House of the Dragon has been so good in my opinion, but Rings of Power has been worse than I ever could have expected. It's good to see some people waking up and realizing that too. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching everyone, and a huge shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well, and I'll talk to you guys later.